Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna show you how to connect a four motor driver using an Arduino Mega. We are going to start by getting the cables and connectors ready, and, and then we're gonna move on to the software part to show you how everything is configured. By the way, you're gonna hear Lee talking in the background. Since this is the first time I'm doing it, he sort of guided me, telling me what steps to follow to get everything working. Okay, so let's get to it. The first step is that we need another set of leads because we have enough leads for two motors, but we need another set for the other two. Yeah, we need two more sets. Okay, two reds, now two blacks. Okay, so now you gotta strip them. So you wanna strip about a quarter inch of the insulation off. I think those are 14 gauge wires. Okay, so we have... Okay, now ready. down under there, is that red yellow thing there? That's a mm -hmm. heat gun. Let me guess, this produces heat? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing gets by you, does it? <laughs> and and I think that ought to be a good enough setting on it. Okay. And then you wanna try and just get the back part of it that's over the wire. And you'll see it shrink down. You want it to shrink down where it's kind of airtight all the way around the wire. Once I discovered those heat shrink connectors, everything's always those now. I like them a lot better. Okay. When you turn it off, it doesn't turn off for a while. If you haven't seen the unboxing video, this is one of the motors that we are going to be using for the new robot. So this is one of four. So as you can see on some of these motors, uh, the connectors are bent. So we're gonna use needle nose pliers and strain them out. Okay, I think that should be good enough. Okay, so I think that should do it. And we'll start connecting the, the lead cables. And you can see on the two connectors, the one that has the dot is the positive. So we'll go ahead and put the red cables on those. And Lee's uh, spotting me in case I do something wrong. Right, Lee? <laughs> That's right. Which I haven't done since 2006, but it could still happen again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've never done anything wrong. Okay, this one's too loose. So this one, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to tighten it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. What's the next step? The <clears throat> next, uh, to hook those leads into the blocks on there. And So the best screwdriver for that is that red one up there on the left. This one? On the left. Then my other left. On your other left, that's right. Is it small enough to go in? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I think we might have too much wire. Okay. Yeah. I was afraid of that. Do. So, yeah, you can just trim it down by using the crimpers or the stripper. Let me move this out of the way. We don't want to get any. Little wires in there and then <laughs> metal fragments in it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, so now continue connecting the motors. Okay, one down, three to go. Okay, so let me double check. We have, yeah, I think they're in the right place. Okay, so let's do a walkthrough of what we've done so far. So, so far we've connected, we have the, the motor shield, um, a four channel, and we have four motors connected to it. Um, 
we found out that the voltage coming from the Arduino car, the 12 volt um, current, it's, it doesn't transfer over to the motor shield. So therefore we have to connect um, these two cables to supply enough power for the motor shield. Uh, so we have, we have that connected to this battery here. We already have the sketch loaded using the Arduino IDE. And so the next thing we're going to do is try to see if the motors work. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the power on the battery. I'm going to connect the Arduino Mega that we're using here. And we already compiled the, the sketch. Look at that. It doesn't seem like two seconds between each cycle, but they're working. Something's gone on. So what, what just happened was that the original sketch had the, um, I guess it would be the speed, right, of, um, of how fast the motors turn set to 100. And for some reason, that delay was not working the way it was supposed to. Um, it would have, the motors should have been changing direction every two seconds, but they, that was not the case. So what we did is that we lowered the value instead of 100 to 50, and that made the motors work properly um, and change direction every six seconds. So now we're gonna try by changing the value to 75 instead of 50. Just and I guess what we're trying to find, Lee, is the threshold where things go out of whack. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just to see what difference different things make basically right now, because that doesn't make any sense. By the way, if you haven't watched the unboxing video where we go over all the components for the new robot, I will leave a link in the description below in case you want to watch it. Okay, so as you noticed in the previous segment, we run into some issues with the motor shield. We notice that when we are running all four motors, they stop working after we get past a certain threshold. I'm gonna spend some time walking you through the code that we are using to run the motors and explain to you the problem that we are having. Before we get to the computer, let me walk you through all the components that we have here. So, so far what we have is the, the four motors that you've seen before. We have the motor shield from DF Robot and we have an Arduino Mega. And we also have a battery. This one is smaller than the one that we were using, but it has enough power to run this little demo. Now let's go to the computer. I already have the Arduino IDE opened. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and connect the, the car and you can see that it's already lighting up. I'm gonna turn on the power on the battery. I'm going to go ahead and upload this sketch to the Arduino. Okay, I need to select the correct board here. And there it is, Arduino Mega. And let's upload that sketch. Okay, and it's already there. And let's open the serial monitor. Let's change this to no line ending. We started with the original sketch downloaded from the manufacturer site, but we made some modifications to it, uh, which we borrowed some code from, from a previous project. Uh, so what we're doing here is that if you, if you look at this string here, this is some code that we wrote while we were at least, and we set it up so we could run some experiments. So for example, if you look at these five characters here, the first digit is giving us, or is indicating the index of the motor. The second character R, it could be R or F, for the direction that you want the motors to spin. And then you have the last three digits, uh, which are numerical values, anywhere from zero to 255, is the speed that you want the motors to run. So what we were doing is that we have had all motors plugged in, all four motors as you see them here, but we were sending current to only one of them because we were running all kinds of different tests trying to find out what was going on and we thought that maybe we had a faulty motor and then we also wanted to isolate to see if the results were different if we were running one motor versus all four motors. So right now, obviously as you can see, we have all four motors connected and I'm going to change this delay here. So this number that you see here, is um, the number of milliseconds that you want the motors to run before they turn off. So I'm going to change that and I'm going to set it to, let's set it to eight seconds instead of 20 seconds. Okay, so one last thing, uh, we modified the code. We don't pinpoint one motor at a time. So right now, whatever command I send, we are going to be ignoring 
uh, the first character. So we are going to pick up the direction and we are going to pick up the speed. So when I send a command, although I'm going to send five characters, remember that we're only uh, we're only taking in consideration the last four characters. And the speed is a variable that I actually care about. So I want to show you that once we get past through a certain threshold, uh, the motors are going to start failing and you'll see what I mean here in a minute. Okay, so let's send the first the first command over. Okay, so let's paste that and I want to say that I want them to run at speed, the speed value of 10. Let's send that command. And you can see they are turning very slowly and they run for eight seconds and then they stopped. So now I'm going to change the speed. I'm going to change it to 30 and I'm going to send that over. Okay, now you can see that they're running a little faster. But I'm verifying that all four, all four motors are actually moving. Now let's send a higher speed. Uh, let's send 50 like it said right there. There we go, so you, can, you have them running at 50. You can tell they're louder and they're moving faster. Again, they run for the full 8 seconds. Okay, so now let's go, let's set the speed to 150, which I'm anticipating based on the, on the results that we've gotten in the previous tests, they should fail. Here we go. So see how they run for a certain amount of time and then it seems like they have to pause, pause and go, pause and go, pause and go. Um, obviously, the, you don't want that happening when you're running a robot. So, so thinking that we were going to continue having those issues, um, we ordered um, a couple of these. Now, these are different because these are two channels instead of a quad channel like the one that we have installed already or that we're um, experimenting with. But these are able to handle more current. We are going to end up implementing these new ones uh, which are stackable so that way we're, we're gonna be able to run all four motors uh, like we're doing now. But we're gonna run two out of each one of these cards. Stay tuned that we're probably gonna be doing that on a, on a future video. Apologies for not spending a lot of time going through the code, but if you're interested in us doing a walkthrough of this code, leave a comment. And if we get enough comments, we'll make a video going over the code. If you found this video useful, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified when we post new videos. Thank you and catch you in the next one. Oh, don't forget to watch the recommended video. No, really, really, you should watch it.